previously on The Other Place. We've got a bit of a problem. Mm. There's, a, there's a town called Vane. Vane? It's, uh, it's about 12 leagues north of here. I've been expecting shipments through the area, and I've gotten word through post that uh, a necromancer has been damming the river to try and oh. flush out one of the river towns. Oh. Hmm. I don't trust the tower with this, and I don't really want to send my men up. Do you think this is something the three of you could handle? Oh, definitely. They're destroying water. Of course, we have to help the water people. Like, oh my gosh. So you're saying there's a necromancer in the area? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. I can pay you if, if you need and oh, arrange yeah. transportation. Oh, that would be lovely. Um, I, I got a question, though. Yeah. What, what do you want? I... Like I said, I'm expecting shipments. It's one of the waterways. We, I don't, don't know if you've noticed, but I'm a bit of a smuggler. Oh, see, he smuggles the good things to good people. We gotta help him. <laughs> That's right, right. We're, we're just getting the things that the people of Gildan need. He oh, smiles we gotta and help like, them. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So what does your intel tell us about him? About the necromancer. Well, I gotta say... I haven't really gotten many guys back out of the area. Oh, great. Oh, you've you been know what adding I mean. to his army. Yeah. Yeah. He, well, I've, I've just had my boys steer clear of it lately. Fair. We've been using other rivers in the area. It's, but it's uh, bad for business. It's, it's bad for business, really. And, and you know, it's, it's bad for the people in this great nation. I like how he we says that, help. and I keep envisioning him looking at uh, Talana over there yes, every time I'm he nodding. says that kind of thing. I'm nodding. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. We gotta help these bad people. We gotta destroy them. And and you know the the the, the paladins, they they're not doing anything about it. Oh, the injustice. They can't even keep their grease fires under control these days. My goodness. I know. No. I mean, the whole tower is burning down. It's just, oh you know. my goodness. Well, it's okay. I heard they have it under control. So the three of you get up early the next morning, mount your horses, and make yes. pretty bad time because <laughs> Tekla can't ride. Oh. I'd say all in all, it takes two and a half days to get to the town of Vane. That's, yeah, that's pretty bad time. <laughs> I would like each of you to tell me one thing that you see on the way there. One interesting thing on the ride or something that happened. Well, I see something kind of terrifying. I see a great big eagle type of bird swooping down <laughs> and killing a, like its prey and then flying off with it. And I'm kind of scared because it's big and it can kill it to take me. So I'm kind of like trying to like stay low onto the horse to like blend in with the horse so that if it sees me, it will think I'm part of the horse and it won't come towards me trying to swoop me up. Because they're kind of terrifying, you know? I mean, if they could come mm -hmm. and take me up, that would be hard. And I don't do well flying. I don't know how to fly. So that <laughs> is not for me. I don't want anything to do with wings and flying. Thank you. So thank you very much. Rab does, does the exact same thing. When she points <laughs> it out to him, he goes, he gets right next to Takoa. Eagle! Eagle! <sighs> Terrifying. It's about twice as big as a typical eagle, too. Wow. Well, eagles are huge as is. That's crazy. Like a, maybe like a uh, 10 foot wingspan. Wow. Whoa. And what that's just this? the baby what? one. <laughs> <laughs> what does uh, Tulana's pony look like? It's going to be a tan color with gray spots, and its mane is going to be just long and flowing, and it's going to kind of trot along. It's got a nice snout on it. It's just going to be kind of slow and trotting. Nice little saddle that's a little too big for her. Yeah, definitely too big. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, halfway there, uh, Takoa's saddle came off, and, and he's like half, sometimes he like half walks on just next to his phone, or his horse, and then every, every now and then he gets back on it and kind of gets slid back off of it. 
has to keep walking again, gets, tries to get back on it later, nonchalantly. I'll stretch my legs. It's nothing. <laughs> You're a fast walker. He's got long legs. I think <laughs> Tekka was on a horse, Tulana's on a pony, and That's... Roberto is on an elk. Because Ooh, we ride fun. elks in this world, too. Nice. He's on a uh, sh- big shaggy thing with antlers. Nice. Here's his <laughs> handles. You have oh, handles. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's 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 like a bit it's like a low rider who has got the really big ha- uh monkey bar handles and we just kind of and we just go. I like this thing. So what is um Rab see on the road? What's the interesting thing that he notices or that happens? Something cool that happens is how about one of the ways that uh the saddle broke is we got kind of in a race with this other little group that's going the same direction we are. Uh, they 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 pull uh-huh. ahead on on a white spot, and then I was like, uh uh-uh. uh, I got Pinto here, you know, Pinto the elk, and he's just the guy. Just he just wants to go. He wants to be the head of any group, and this other group just keeps passing him, and so we just keep <laughs> doing this back and forth, back and forth, and, and uh, finally like you do on long road trips. Yeah, yeah. yep, yep. And mm-hmm. I think this one time uh, we got a little overzealous and we cut it too close. <laughs> And mm-hmm. I accidentally put Tokoa into into the side of a hill, and it, it, I think that's that what kind it. of mm-hmm. that, that would jack that up would the saddle it. a little bit. I can't steer this thing. <laughs> He's got a lot Scrape. more go than I thought. <laughs> it gets pretty rocky as you head mm-hmm. up north, and um, some you, you start to see the the, the foothills of, of mountains way up ahead of you. Oh, perfect. This fits into exactly what I wanted to share as my as my thing. So we see storm clouds rolling in uh, probably the uh, the morning, maybe the mid early morning, mid you know, noontime, whatever, for the, the second day, since it took us two days to get there, um, uh-huh. so wherever the, the hills are. Right. And so uh, there's these really nasty looking storm clouds are coming in. So we got to take shelter. So um, we actually see some caves off in the foothills. And there's a colony mm-hmm. of um, of elves, the uh, the ones that dwell under the in the caves. And we uh, basically yeah. they they give us lodging for the time while the storm is passing by, and we get to talk with them and share stories and kind of reprovision and get our bearings and stuff like that while that's going on. So that's my thought. Cool. It's a big sort of open underground area, and they've got their homes built into the rock. That's uh, awesome. Elaborate carvings. It's a, it's a cool experience. Probably a pretty unique experience, too. Mm-hmm. I mean, not so much for, well, on land, yeah, for me, but under underground, I'm used to that yeah. kind of thing, or in the water, I'm used to that with uh, the yeah. sea kith doing that kind of stuff. So what did we do when, with these guys? We did, like, we came and we ate. What did we eat? Mm. They probably uh, roasted beets, that kind of thing. I'm sure they had roasted, they've, they've hunted and things of that nature, but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. obviously they're going to treat you you know respectfully with that they know about the your, your race with the vegetables and all. yeah yeah yeah, right. yeah. this one's called drift d-r-i-f how's that sound yeah okay because it's uh yeah because it's at the it's at the southern end of the the foothills and everything and they're kind of near an area where they get drift wood and stuff like that so they call it drift without the t um mm-hmm. i think that yeah. they might know more about what's going on in the area. Another reason why we wanted to stop where some semi-locals are. They may not know the real situation, but they can kind of give us word better than what we got from Branson. Right. Yeah. So I think it's really cool. I think it's a good idea. I like it. So it is thundering outside of this cave town. Uh, The rain is coming down hard. If it clears up, you'll probably be able to get a little bit further today. Mm -hmm. But if not, you have shelter for the night. The elves that live down here, um, it's not just exclusively elves. There are other people around too, but it's, yeah. I'd say, probably about 90% elves here. So it's founded by elves, but they don't mind other people being there. Right. They welcome you. It is really like any other town, except it's underground. It, hmm. there, there's a tavern, there's there are That's awesome. brewers, there are uh, carvers, people who make homes down here. Hmm. And... Um, maybe one of the locals has offered a, a room for the evening. Uh, they are a younger elf, probably in their hundreds. <laughs> <laughs> no, el- elves actually don't get that old. Elves probably get about 200 years old in this world. So maybe okay. he's in his uh, 40s. Okay. And he is, he 
lives with his family and has uh, offered his front room to the three of you for the night. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I appreciate it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we really appreciate his... Uh, uh, so what's his name, I wonder? Um, his name is Aaron. 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 Okay. Appreciate that. So we make ourselves at home. Um, Taco will be happy to offer his services to help out with any manual labor or anything like that. Just to, you know, our keep, you know, they're, they're being generous, but he wants to kind of earn our keep a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. If there's anything Come. broken that's wooden, I can fix it. <laughs> Maybe he brings you uh, one of his kid's toys. Okay. I'm going to fix Aww. it. What, what kind of toy is it, Joy? It's probably one of those little wooden toys where... You have a string that's attached to it, and you kind of do the... It goes back and forth, and you can pull the string, and it makes it turn and spin faster. So the faster mm-hmm. you pull the string, the faster it turns, and I guess the, the little string broke off of it, so I'm going to have to get some string, and I'm going to fix it for him. For a second, I was thinking it was one of those horrible little wooden cups with a wooden ball on a string. No. Oh, jeez. <laughs> those are the worst. <laughs> yes. I saw... <laughs> the ball cups. All right, so... Uh, Talana makes herself busy fixing that, and Aaron shows Tekawa where he has his firewood. If he really wants to do work, he can chop some wood. Yeah, no, he'll ha- be happy to do that. I mean, he's been sitting on a, a, a beast, you know, for like, well, walking next to it, you know, for like a day. So yeah. Yeah. he's more than happy to uh, <laughs> go, you know, get some exercise since he hasn't been able to do like any of his morning routines and things like that with everybody else around. Mm-hmm. So. So yeah, he'll happy, be happy to do that. Chop up wood, make sure there's plenty there. He'll go above and beyond and do more than what was mm-hmm. asked, just out of you know gratefulness at the fact that they're opening up his Aaron's opening up his home to us. Do you need my and axe? Wood? Hmm? Oh no, no, there's one right here. That's fine. Oh okay. Separates weapons from you know everyday use items. <laughs> <laughs> what is Rab doing here? Oh man, I I, I had this idea that coming into this place there's a lot of pebbles and that mm-hmm. he found this nice oh we'll say it's about a uh, eight inch round stone and he takes mm-hmm. out his little uh, his pocket trowel every canara gets these pocket trowels growing up they're used for everything from digging up carrots to helping cut down uh little s- branches and stuff like that it's almost like a like a, a u.s military shovel it little folds down mm-hmm. and oh okay and he but smaller yeah, but smaller, you know, and <laughs> it, yeah, and I and I kind of want to make have him like carve on it and uh, carve like a rabbit. I, I was thinking maybe one of the things that Kanara could do when they encounter a friendly home is they leave these uh, stepping stone that they're Kanara friendly, mm-hmm. showing the sign that that they are Kanara friends and they're kind to them. And you know, do you want? It, Go ahead. And, and, I've just got an idea. <laughs> I, I was going to say, and, and kind of sing a little bit of songs, harking back to uh, when he was a kid and talking about how Canaras are given these, their pocket stones that each Canara has, keeps one th- from their own family to keep them reminding of, of, of them. And this is kind of one of those deals. Since you're singing anyway, would you like to take it one step further and forge something magic into the stone? Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Yes, he would. <laughs> <laughs> so forge is one of our custom magic abilities mm-hmm. and you can just you can forge things into things you can forge different magical things we, i've used mm-hmm. it to forge traps into walls but you could use it to oh, wow. forge say protection or we've used it on weapons to um forge the pierce quality into it or something like that I've got but you could just use it thematically and make it a, a rabbit that moves or something like that. <laughs> oh, wow. That would be kind of cool. I kind of had this idea of, as you're talking about that as having this like this be a doorbell almost where <laughs> a person it, it would it would have a like a light uh, blue glow and that a person would mm-hmm. hit it and it would chime and sing a little song and maybe move a little bit on the rabbit. <laughs> where, what were you thinking, okay. Chris? Oh, it was just, it was not going to be anything that cool. It was going to be more like, uh, it was going to be like a blessing of, of luck. And so it would have a, basically the augment spell on it. So that somebody touched it before they left or whatever, it would give them a boost on their next thing they do. Oh, I like that. Like the ma- mechanically, that's what it is. But thematically, it was just kind of a blessing of luck to the family. You can combine the two. And when they push it, they get a good luck <laughs> and it makes a little thing dance. 
Depends on how difficult you want your check to be. <laughs> yep. Oh. So one purple does the doorbell with a little bit of a music. Two could give a boost. Yeah, I can go with that. And use Arcana since it's a... Yes, Forge works uh, right now with Arcana and Divine. All right. So yellow, yellow, green, purple, purple. Can I get a boost since there's a thunderstorm raging outside that there's magic in the air? It's magic in the air. And, and I'll give you there's <laughs> magic in the air. There, you know, when there's lightning, you know how when you know how when, when it's, the thunder rolls. Oh, I'm when sorry. the thunder Did rolls. Damn. <laughs> now that's gonna be stuck in my head. Uh, you know when the thunder rolls and it's when raining outside. Strikes. Okay, so you could definitely have a boost for having having time. Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> this is uh, we're gonna call it uh, what a Kanara charm. A, yeah, Lux. gateway charm or something like that. Luck Ooh. charm. Do you want to spend a story point to give yourself an upgrade? Oh. We have two. Yes. Yes, I would. <laughs> Joy, we like spending them a lot. <laughs> it's okay. Oh, man, that's so many black. That's so many black. I, wish I, I, I haven't <laughs> spent enough yet. <laughs> All right, here we go. Three yellow, PP, and a boost. I just love that we're spending it on this little guy. Oh, yes. There we two go. Successes. Yeah. So what does it look like when you put it together? And what does the little song it chimes sound like? And the thunder rolls. Da, da, da. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I like that. Okay. I'm thinking it's this, it's this eight inch disc. It's like some sort of soapstone. Mm -hmm. It's got a rabbit in a, like a, a hopping rabbit that's like in a crescent shaped. And okay. it, well, and it's, it's hopping over, uh, well, the, where the doorbell would be. And that'll be like a a little circle with a little lightning on it and when it and when it when you press it it sends a little bit of a it glows that faint blue and it sends out a little bit of a rumble 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 i don't know dun dun yeah those the, the thunder rolls do you have a different idea for uh a, a... no that's good okay all right and i might as well just use one. Oh no we don't like your kind here <laughs> no, it's just Wait. that the, the thunder doesn't stop and you you lose a day of travel. <laughs> you have, you're you stuck here for the night, which isn't bad. You've got shelter. You've got a place to stay. Oh, yeah. But you effectively lose lose a day that you could be helping people. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's true. So with the he's got a little. How, does he have a couple of kids uh, or one kid? Yeah, or? he's got he's got two kids. Yeah, they're how old? How old do you think? Like teenagers, are they like little probably. Ones? Oh, teenagers. Okay. Eh, well, no, they're they're not. If they've got that string toy, mm -hmm. maybe ten at the oldest. Okay, so uh, at night, so you know, Takoa's like passed out or like you know on like a, a couch of some sort or whatever where he's sleeping. So he's rolled out a bedding for him, and uh, he's just kind of sitting there relaxing back or whatever. And, and one of them, you know, the little kids are you know coming over and talking to him because obviously they they want to see the new people, so they'll talk to him. But um, at some point you're mm -hmm. gonna you're gonna have it literally where one of the the young ones is. Yeah, these people have been around the world. Yeah, so uh, he's talking with one of them, and, and they just kind of get talking or whatever, and they're just kind of sitting there next to each other. And eventually, Takoa passes out with the uh, with one of the little ones like snuggled up against him. Aw, mm -hmm. that poor kid's gonna smell like fish for days. Yeah. Man, <laughs> <laughs> there's nothing wrong with smelling like sea kids. We smell beautiful. <laughs> You're just better, jealous. You better than smelling like wet, wet hair. Like I had <laughs> wet hair. <laughs> but, uh, uh, wet hair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well done. They see you off the next morning as you <laughs> mount your pony, horse, and elk, and make your way to the town of Vane. I guide my horse. Yes. <laughs> can I take another? Can I do another riding check to see if I actually get the hang of this by now? Sure. Just, just, just to punish myself more. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, what's the difficulty? Hey, if of you want to punish be? yourself, if you want to punish yourself, hold on a second. Let <laughs> me upgrade that. He's going to flip it, Wayne. <laughs> All right. So I got one red in there. What's the, uh, is it average? Yeah, it's average. Okay. It'll be average then. Great. Awesome. I'm going to punish you, myself. You know, Let's I only this, need this... One, one die in the check to get a despair, right? Just right. like the last time. We do know this. <laughs> Oh right, yeah, we do need we do owe you a despair at some point. No, I'd rather it be no. on this. <laughs> well, it also makes sense we're getting closer to where the necromancer's activity is, so there might be an issue and that would be perfect for the red. So 
Nope. Two advantages. Nope. Again, I can't, I'm <laughs> just walking. Yep. But the advantage, we could fix your It goes pretty um, much the same. Saddle. You could fix the saddle. It's not being put to use, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's fixed. <laughs> this horse yeah. does not like him at all. No, and you don't even want to trade with yep. your elk, so yeah, I'm stuck with this horse that's the long face that is not amused with this fish person riding, trying to ride him. Keeps reaching back and biting my leg. <laughs> you find some time on your short lunch break, then uh, Talana fixes the saddle. Awesome. Great. The three of you get to your destination in the late afternoon. The sun is oh. close to the eastern horizon because it sets in the east. Okay. And two of the moons are high in the sky. Ooh. When you spot the town of Vane, you spot just a trickle of water in the riverbed. Mm-hmm. The town itself sits on an island in the center of the river, mm-hmm. and it has uh, bridges that span this. It, the river, in a normal day, on a normal situation, it would be wide. And it looks like it would probably be running pretty quickly. Mm. And they have the two bridges up at the moment. Which makes sense. Okay. There are guards posted on the sides of this bridge. It looks like there is a wall around the town now. It looks like it was hastily built and recently built. The wood looks fresh and oh. tall. And okay. there's a little tower next to the bridge where a pair of guards is, is standing. Yeah, we got an idea what they're planning, they're preparing for. <laughs> you got about 50 feet between you and them. Oh, wow. And one okay. of them calls out, who goes there? Hi! <laughs> we all wave. We're, I'm waving. <clears throat> We're coming friends. to help you. We're friends. Can you prove it? We heard you had trouble. We're here to beat them down to here. We heard you had some problems with some dead things. How do we know you're not dead? Because we're talking to you? You can't quite see who these people are. You're you're at a distance and the light's kind of bad. But they are reluctant to lower their bridge. Yeah, that's... that's Somebody like to do some sort of social check? You don't want me doing a social check. (laughs) (laughs) One of these days I'll coerce somebody, but not now. This is not going to help us in there. And we have deception. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't be deceiving. Yeah, I can come up with something. It's another song, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not, I don't want to push through that again. Oh my goodness. Well, we can do uh, the, the. We can. We got salt. We got water. We got iron. Uh, mm-hmm. All these different things. Yeah, Tico's also got that special little thing. But yeah, that. Oh, we want to keep him ahead, hidden, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll, I, yeah, uh, I'll walk forward. You step back. I go. Mm-hmm. Hello, hello, hello. I know, you're just right there. I can talk. Okay. <laughs> look, uh, I, I, he pulls out his, his, his knife and goes, look, iron, iron, fine. Look, my canteen of water. Ah, uh, oh, look, a nice salty carrot. Ah, uh, look, <laughs> salt water iron. We're good. I love water. I would still like you to roll. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she also mentioned what city we're from. Killed her. Oh, yeah. All right, so it's going to be against this guard. I want it to be a red and a purple. A red and a purple? Because he's suspicious. Um, let me he see is what suspicious, I got. and they've had a lot of problems lately. And yeah, it's getting close like to it. nighttime. Yeah, that's a good point. You can, can have a boost get... for uh, showing the, your iron. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Do you have another one in mind? I was going to s- say... Did you touch that charm before you left? Heck yeah, I touched it. You have to check it. (laughs) (laughs) Had to make sure it works. I mean, that's why you made it, right? That's right. (laughs) All right. So I got a yellow, yellow, red, purple, blue, blue. Let us in, please. Yes. Yes. Oh, just a threat, huh? <laughs> oh, I know. I, I'm like, I don't know these Genesis symbols well enough yet. Which one is that? Just okay. not the despair. Okay. That's the important part. Well, that's what we were here yeah, to talk about. Despair. Okay. <laughs> we'll get it eventually. So the guard calls down, Okay, we'll let you in. And they lower the bridge. 
as they lower it, you see that there is still a gate on the other side, and one of the guards comes through and, and stands at the far gotcha. end of the bridge. Of course. Okay. All right, hey. so as they lower the bridge. And I assume we can ride our, or walk our stuff down. Well, I'll walk <laughs> mine down, you can ride yours. Yes. Well, we can all, well, I'll walk mine next to you, so. Oh, uh, thank you. So it seems I'll horrible. ride mine. <laughs> the guard is, is holding some kind of, uh, it, it's not like a, it's not a sword or anything. It's, it's a kind of metal bar in front of him, hmm. in his right hand. Okay. Oh. And as you make your way across the bridge, he says, I'm going to have to check you and your horses. Oh, by all means. Oh, hey, hey uh, what's up, Doc, with the uh, the stick? You going to beat us with it or what? <laughs> no. He's going to make sure we're not dead. He takes it and at a distance, it, it's uh, a couple feet long, touches Roberto and then Roberto's elk with it and nothing happens. Oh, is it and then like, he touches uh, uh, Talana uh, and oh her pony boy. with it, and nothing happens. And then he touches Teko Teko with it. Uh huh. <laughs> Discipline? What do you think? I keep that thing yeah, I, in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's got to be discipline. There's nothing mm-hmm. else I could use for that. Oh boy. All right. Well, All right. He, he oh, doesn't like to be it's just a, He doesn't it's like a short poked. touch. And I'm. I'm oh, you, <laughs> it's just going to be one red. Oh my gosh! Just one red. Just one red. The most dangerous kind of all. Just a just a red. Just just a red. So what is this? Is this a iron rod that he's touching with us with, or what? It's it's an iron rod. Yeah, it looks very heavy. Okay. Wow. He must have some great forearms. You are very strong. <laughs> yeah. All right. Iron rod discipline. Oh boy. Here we go. So I've got a yellow, a green, a green, and a red. <laughs> please, please, I don't need to freak what could out. Happen? Oh, oh, a lot could happen. A lot could happen right now. <laughs> I'm sure I'm still gonna have to make this discipline check later, anyway. So yeah, let's uh, let's see what happens. Oh my gosh, I hey. actually passed that. Yes, <laughs> two successes and two advantages. Uh, two advantages. I it looked like nothing happened at all. Nothing. Even though I maybe squirt yeah. a little bit on the side, I'm, I'm fine. Right. Nothing happened. What did it feel like? for Tekoa, though. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so have you ever have you ever been in the ocean when the riptide kind of pulls at your feet? Like when the, the tide kind of moves? Mm-hmm. It's, it's pretty dangerous, you know, cause it, because it feels like it just kind of whips you out from underneath you, but you can kind of feel yourself being tugged, your legs being tugged away from you. Right. It feels like that spiritually for him. So, because he is a believer in the, uh, in the currents of life, it feels like almost his spirit was almost shoved away from him momentarily. Like he almost lost his balance in that regard. So he's like holding on to mm-hmm. his horse. Uh, but that's what it feels like. So like really heavy weight. And then suddenly like he doesn't have any support, but he manages to keep his calm and his cool and use the two advantages to brace himself on the horse, actually, since he's standing next to him. Okay. You three check out. You can head in. Hmm. And the other, other guard calls down. What are you doing? Close up for the night. Oh. You three better hurry. All right, I'm thank you hurry. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Uh, where's uh, the best place to get a place around here? A uh, place to eat, place to sleep? Uh, As we're walking. Th- there's, there's only one place in town. It's... Uh... Hideaway Hole? Ooh. Sure, it's the Hideaway Hole. Can we... He says, yeah, there's only one place. It's the, the Hideaway Hole. You can't miss it. It's at the center of town. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. Yep. And the bridge closes up behind you. Uh, let's out the breath he was holding. <laughs> oh. This this town looks like it's seen better days. The people here look look thin oh. and look worried and tired. And there are more guards than you typically see in a town. There are more people walking around with with weapons, and they all look on the younger side, Uh-oh. like they're new new to this. And okay. you spot the hideaway hole. Uh, it is at the center of town, and it's uh, it's one of the bigger buildings. It's it's two stories, and it's sort of a, a U shaped with a, a square in the center. Hmm. But yeah, it's the local tavern, and it's pretty quiet. It's not as as rambunctious as the places in Gilder. Okay. Well, well for obvious reasons. Uh, in the, in this 
Yeah, in the center of it is a uh, an old fading sun lamp. Oh, that's not good. Too bad somebody can't recharge that. How would one go about recharging it? Uh, that would be easy. Snap your fingers, All you would need some feathers. is yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's right. It's a summoning fe- uh, spell. You just need to have some burnt feathers, and yeah. But no, how would uh, would somebody who's not a paladin be able to recharge that? Somebody could probably figure it out. It's just a, so a, a bright, bright sun like light. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that mm-hmm. also makes it clear that they don't really have many people who are proficient with magic around here. Hmm. Okay. Otherwise, they may have done that themselves. Yeah. Let's yeah, not it's unusual. not that uncommon. Yeah, people don't generally care about magic since everybody can do it. <laughs> well, now that there's a necromancer around, I bet they really wish they did have someone good with magic that can make that really bright. <laughs> it's probably true. So I guess we're going to put our, our beasts of riding up, and then you guys you want to do anything about the sun lamp before we go into the tavern? Or? Well, I can't do anything with it. You guys might. Well, it's getting on towards night. And it's, it is kind of, look, I've never messed with one of those before. <laughs> I've never messed with it either. It looks like it would be interesting, though, to try it. I work with water. So I could maybe make like a magnifying cling and make it kind of reflective and make it a little bit brighter, appear brighter than it is. But I don't know if I could. I might end up putting it out. <laughs> oh, well, you do have that holy magic. <laughs> hey, Mark, what type of magic would be best to get these things up and going? Well, what is in it right now is a small sun-like flame. But if you had a different idea of getting the same results, I wouldn't say no. Mm. Well, I mean, we Talana did just have, has that. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, we did just use, uh, like, lightning power, you know, to charge something. Mm-hmm. True. Well, Roberta's, Roberta's thing... It seems to be mostly musical based, music based, sound based. You want to feel like I, I could it somehow. see him sort of figuring out its frequency or making it sort of pulse with a beat or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. I could see. On the other hand, I could see Talana replacing it outright with uh, a yeah. glowing uh, water type beacon right. type thing. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what we would use in our in the ocean because we go deep diving. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, we can make like a lightning uh, deal where it's uh, it's like that globe that has like electricity in the center that's just going be, going to a beat and refracting over the uh, the waters that are orbing out, and it's just so like, a combination. Yeah, we can do a combo chart. I can do it. Would you like to do it on like? Are we gonna do it on this one? Or are we gonna like make our own and set it up next to it so we don't screw this one up? <laughs> People are probably weird thinking we're doing this, but you know, <laughs> Tacoa. What's the worst that would happen? I'm we gonna could do totally it anyways. Get, what, I'm gonna do I'm, it on it. I'm gonna. You know what? You, you know that's fine. You two go do that. I'll take our horse, our, our beasts of riding, and put them up. Okay. And I will pretend like I'm not a part of this, just in case something so, happens. So I have two ranks in primo. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I can yep. roll and get a boost hmm. from you, and we can do it. You have two ranks in what? In primal in my magic skill. Nice. So I have two yellows and one green. Uh, that's what I got for Arcana. All right. And, and divine. Yeah, you two don't have any overlapping magic skills, so you can't really do a group check. Mm. Uh-uh. But maybe one of you could offer advice. What about knowledge of lore? You could do a lore check to see if you could come up with the way that the the, the tower, the yeah. paladins do it. Without green flame that burns everything down. Yeah, I have one rank in that lore. Yeah, without a green flame. And and, and I yeah, <laughs> uh, and, and I and I have uh, forbidden, which I use for my lore. So let can we do that to get a boost for our magic yeah. check? Yep. What I'm thinking here is that Roberto is checking it out, and Tekoa is holding up Talana to to also check it out, and they're trying okay. to figure out exactly how it's how it works. Oh, that's right, because she's so short. That works. Yes. Yeah. I can I can make one of my little globe thingies and I can hmm and you put it in here and then you'd have to do this. Okay. Um But it's but it's got a distinct crackle going on right now. If if you listen to that you know, little flame, it, it it's it's moving to its own little rhythm. So yeah. I, I think we could you know, that crackle I can is kind of the orb. 
and then you can put the frequency to it. And then it would not only it, it would also sound. I wonder if we, it could make it so if it hears a certain, it could be like an alarm system too, right? We could do Ooh. that. So why don't I make the orb, and you can make the frequency, and then we can place it in here. I got an idea, just out of character wise, uh, for that frequency. Yeah, it can be like a soothing hum when it's normal, but then when as undead approach, it changes pitch hmm. and glows. Like as a warning, mm -hmm. and it'll glow brighter. Yeah, yeah, something like that. So it's reactive rather than just passive. I like it. So let's get that lore check to figure out how it works, which will okay. probably be Roberto with a boost for Tulana. Okay. Okay. And it's actually going to, it's a very simple spell, so it's an easy. All right. So I got a yellow, green, green, blue, purple. Yep. Mm -hmm. This is our lore check. Okay. So so you, you've, you've sort of figured out how, to, how it works, adding two boosts to whichever of you wants to do the check to make the new one. Well, let me do the... I have to do the orb, so... Yeah, you'll be adding a boost. So two boosts for figuring it out how it worked. An additional boost for Rab assisting. Okay. And... And flipping a destiny point to get yourself an upgrade. Yes. Okay. <laughs> you. It will be against two purples to do all the things that you want it to do. Two purples. Yep. You sure not a red and a purple? Yeah, I'm sure. I don't need another person coming out and saying, well, you, what are you doing, my sun lamps? <laughs> like in the fir first episode. Oh, oh boy. Darn it! How? What in the world? That's a lot of blanks. Yes. Uh, that's a failure right. to threat, though. That is so, a so The guy comes the... out and says, hey, what are you doing with my sun lamps? <laughs> that is exactly what happened, pretty much. So the three of you are crowding around this sun lamp in the center of town and people are watching. They don't they don't know you. They don't recognize you. Mm -hmm. And somebody comes out of this inn and says, hey, what are you doing to our lamp? Who are you? What? So you go, oh, what are sorry, you doing here? Just trying to help. Uh, it looks kind of weak. So we we're trying to see if we could help boost it for you. You're not you're not paladins. You're not wearing the white robes. Who, who are you? <laughs> I'm Talana. Nice to meet you. I'm imagining Talana running up and trying to shake this person's hand. Yes. Yes. Uh huh. Oh my gosh. This person is a uh, younger orc. They've got green skin and stand at about two and a half Talanas. <laughs> it's a unit of measurement. I love it. Nice uh -huh. meeting you. And he does not extend his hand. What are you doing? Oh, we're you trying to make it brighter. Here. Oh, we're, we're just from, trying to help. We, we come from Gilder. We've heard that you're having issues with uh, a necromancer in the area. Yes, we're here yeah. to destroy the bad guys for you. <sighs> what, three people against an army of dead? I don't think oh. we're going to do much here. <laughs> we'll be fine. What's three more than I you have? I got my axe. <sighs> and then Tulana takes out the axe and waves it at him. <laughs> yeah, just waves it around. I have to take it out. I'm holding it and I place it firmly on the ground. I hold it. Look, I have an axe. It stands the same size as her. Yeah. I can kill a lots of undead with this. And yes. Just so <laughs> <laughs> as she says, I can kill a lot of undead with it. Oh no. <laughs> you hear uh, a yell from where you came in. It's indistinct right now you can't hear exactly what the person is saying but everyone around sort of looks up and the crowd starts to panic it's very likely that the dead are outside the gates thanks for listening to another episode of the other place loving the show and want more join us and other fans on twitter instagram discord and patreon the other place is a production of nightcast creative for more info about us and our other projects, visit nightcastcreative.com.